Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo South. I am very excited for today's session, folks, because it's been some time. It has been some time. And I just wanna say right off the bat, I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, I never like, uh, you know, when, when things go off schedule or when they get delayed, but this last week I, I guess it's been a week i don't know it's all just one big blur it feels like one long day since uh, my announcement uh post on on the community tab uh it just it's all this big blur but it's been absolutely wild um i'm basically <laughs> it's more or less like i'm living at two different addresses going back and forth uh, every day there's a long commute there's supervising our uh you know, um, renovations and stuff that are going on, making sure all that's going okay, making sure all the material... It's its absolutely wild. It's very exciting, and it's like a, it's a good kind of stress, I guess, but it is, it is a kind of stress, and it's been obviously throwing things off as far as the schedule is concerned on the channel. Lots of videos are kind of going off schedule, and at the same time, YouTube has been acting up a lot lately as well, where it kind of refuses to process videos into HD on time. Uh, so if this episode goes out late... That'll be why, and I apologize as well on top of my existing apology, like an extra, this is a, this is a layer cake of apologies. Um, if that happens, that's on YouTube. Uh, it's been happening a lot this past week, and a lot of my videos have been like ready to go, but then delayed by several hours at times. Hopefully I'm able to get this out uh, on time though, um, because yeah, I, I would love to actually get this one out, you know, at, at the regularly scheduled time. Uh, with that said, so as I was saying, Thing number one that I wanted to say was, uh, I'm sorry for the uh, delay in this episode. And thing number two is uh, uh, sort of, uh, I, I guess, thank you for your patience, um, for your understanding. And uh, honestly, like, thank you. I, I don't think words can really signify just how much I appreciate um, that just the the just yeah just just the i i, I guess the flexibility the the the, uh, the understanding that i i don't even i can't even put it into words honestly it, it's very difficult to express uh because it's made such a massive difference as you can imagine I, again like i was saying you know it's it's a stressful time it's a, it's a good kind of stress you know it's exciting i'm really pumped i can't wait to share uh like the new like studio space we're getting and all that kind of stuff um and but you know and that's all great but it is of course like i was saying it's living in two different addresses basically trying to get you know the internet hooked up so there's no downtime when we move all kinds of weird stuff and crazy shenanigans uh and and, and to just know that folks are uh, are understanding of the situation um and and and, and just uh, uh patience i guess for lack of a better word it, it really makes such a big difference uh in in just reducing the level of stress uh, on at least one front. So I uh, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so very much for understanding and for your uh, your patience. Um, but uh, uh, honestly, it's it's huge. Again, words words can't do justice uh, how grateful I am. Uh, what hopefully can do justice, maybe, and you let me know if I'm right or wrong, is how uh, jam-packed today's episode is going to be. Uh, I have a lot of plans. Um, I've been very excited to execute on some of these, and actually, in some ways, this uh, this delay has been a bit of a blessing, I'm going to say, uh, from a uh, creative standpoint for our beautiful, beautiful zoo, because if it was not for this delay, I would not have come across something that I am really like excited to uh, to include in our upcoming executions. So in, 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 kinda, in a way, that kind of works out, kind of works out. Uh, but yes, it's going to be a jam-packed session today, folks. We're going to get a new animal in. We're going to get a time-lapse in. We're going to do some uh, beautification. I think it's going to be absolutely... It's either going to be absolutely amazing or it's not going to work at all. It really depends on the pieces that I'm working with. And we'll see if we can make it happen. But I'm really excited. Because if we can pull it off, it'll be unlike anything I've done before. And that always gets me very pumped. Uh, but... Uh, before we get into that, before we get the new animal, before we get the uh, time lapse, I also want to, of course, get in our new staff and our uh, sponsor board. Now, our sponsor board we'll do as a part of our time lapse. There's only the one, uh, and the staff as well. There's only the one name request. So I'll be getting that done right off the bat over here. And I just want to reiterate, folks, because I feel like maybe I've miscommunicated at some point, and I want to be crystal clear. If you already have a staff member named after you know yourself, or or you've given a name to, I shouldn't say after yourself because it can you know it's a name. It, it can be any any kind of name. Uh, but if you if you've already got a name in there among the staff, uh, or if you've already sponsored an animal, that doesn't mean you can't do it again, right? Uh, I, I try to keep it once a month so that the uh, so to to spread the love as I like to say. But uh, but if you have already sponsored an animal and you'd like to sponsor another, 
at, at either Elite Two South or North, let me know. If you've already got a staff name and you would like to name another, let me know. Um, I I, it's, I just want to make sure that I was I was clear there because uh, it's a it's a it's a perk as it's a it's a way of saying thank you. And so I want to make sure people were taking advantage of that as often and as freely as they would like. So I just wanted to. Uh, get that out there now as I put these names and sponsor boards in today I just want to mention as well if I somehow have missed your request Especially over this last week. I again. I'm sorry, but please don't hesitate to like just let me like remind me ba like badger me if I wouldn't use that word because it's it's it, it's it's not Badgering it's reminding but I know some people would think of it that way So I want to give you reassurances you will not be annoying me or anything like that if you if you go Hey, you missed my request or this and that thing let me know in the comments down below or shoot me a private message on Patreon uh, and I will get it uh, fixed right away. Uh, thank you again on that front as well for your patience. Now, our staff member over here is Trigart. There we go. Make sure I spell that correctly. Trigart joining in as our latest security guard. Thank you very much, buddy, again for the ongoing support. And let me know if I've butchered the pronunciation there, of course, as always, because uh, I'm, I, I always am open to being corrected. Uh, but that is our latest uh, named staff member, a new security guard. And we, again, like I said earlier, will also have a new sponsor board coming through as well. But before we uh, get to that, it'll be during the time lapse. I want to talk a little bit about the new animal we're going to be adding today. So we're going to be continuing development up top over here. Um, what I'm going to actually do is add an animal to the existing space and see how much of a difference it makes in terms of land area requirement. I might Part of the time lapse might include expanding this, uh, this space as well, uh, but a lot of the time lapse, well, you'll, you'll see when we get to it. Um, the reason why I want to get a new animal in here is, um, well, manifold. I was going to say twofold, but I was like, there's a, there's a couple of things, and I, I don't want to give myself a count limit before I even begin. One, I want to see uh, how these animals interact with each other. I just want to see them share the space. Uh, two, I want to see visually the impact of having more animals in here because something I keep bringing up is like, oh, you know, some parts feel kind of barren, but maybe as more animals come in, it'll feel a bit better. Um, and uh, so that, well, that was, what was that? That was two. Um, and then uh, three as well, I want to see what kind of an impact it has as far as land area requirement. At one point, of course, we're going to reach that tipping point where we just don't have enough land area and the animals are going to start getting upset and we have to expand. Now, again, we are definitely going to have to expand, but I just want to be cognizant of what that tipping point is. I've got a tendency to overdo it from the beginning anyway. I tend to go like, oh, oh, you need 100, uh, you need 100 meters square. Okay, how about we give you 10 kilometers square? And, uh, oh, the guests are now complaining about views. What? Uh, that, that tends to be my, my approach, right? So I'm going to just try and find that tipping point and then we'll expand this enclosure. That might happen next time. It, you know, it might happen today if it's, uh, if it's necessary, but uh, it, it'll probably happen, I think, next time or the time after that as we keep adding more and more animals to the space. Uh, and then eventually, I mean, I, I've got some great suggestions as well. Now, correct me if I've, if I've misunderstood this. I'm pretty sure I've understood this right. But uh, a great suggestion I got was with regards to actually making two enclosures over here, um, but sort of blocking, ha having this kind of be like a bit of a, a bridge, having two enclosures and kind of separating them, but making them look like they're one, um, and using that as a way to manage the terrain requirements of all the animals. That's an interesting, uh, If again, if I've understood that right, it's a very interesting idea, and it's an interesting way to work around uh, some of the issues we might be butting up against as we try to balance, you know, the uh, terrain needs of... Uh, of our ostrich over here alongside the terrain needs of, say, a uh, white rhino rhinoceros, right? Uh, so definitely something I want to keep in my back pocket. For now, I'm going to challenge myself and see how 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 big we can get with uh, with one enclosure, and then I might regret all the decisions I make and uh, and find a way to uh, retroactively uh, fix that because uh, those are the those are the kinds of uh, life choices I like to make. Um, but let's see, what have we got going on over here? So that's uh, that's that. We need to figure out which animal to add. And again, there's so much going on. Oh, actually, before I even get to that, just want to point out there is a brand new community challenge. Critically endangered. There are species that need a lot of attention in preservation and care. Learn more today about some critically endangered species by releasing them in this community challenge. Already at 100% complete. This one, it's kind of funny. It's just like, it's, 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 like a, it's like a pendulum. We have one challenge that's like nigh impossible. And then the follow-up challenge is the easiest uh, you could ever you could ever make a challenge in in this game. Uh, all you have to do is release critically endangered species um, to the wild, and we could probably do that ourselves right now this session. But what I'm probably going to do 
because there's four, day, four days sorry, left on this one, maybe we'll save that for next time uh, so that we can stay focused on some other stuff this time. But yes, I just wanted to flag this so I can kind of have a mental note for myself, a note for all of y'all as well. But I do want to get involved because this one, we should be able to get involved relatively easily. And I mean, come on, like, like if we take a look at Zoopedia really quickly, which is where we have to go next anyway. Uh, I wish you could filter by like, you know, we need critically endangered. Is that right? I want to make sure critically endangered. Yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we've got the, um, what have we got? We've got the, uh, is the Baird's tape here critically endangered? No, just endangered. We've got the, um, what are they called? Oh dear. The name is skipping my mind. Lemurs. I think, I think the red rough lemur. Yep. Uh, is the ringtail lemur? No, just endangered. We got, we got options, right? We've got, uh, of course, everything I click on right now is, is not going to be one of our options, but we've, we've got options. And if, uh, if you know our options off the top of your head, I will absolutely welcome, uh, you sharing those known options off the top of your head. But we've got the Western, Western chimpanzee. We got the, uh, Lowland gorilla. We've got, uh, I, I believe. Oh yeah. Positive story, the southern white rhino. Good vibes, good vibes. Anyway, we've, we've got options, and I think what we'll do is uh, we'll go around to uh, both zoos uh, next session and, uh, and and get our contribution in, right? We're already at 100%, which is great to see, so let's, uh, let's add on to that. Now, with that said, which animal are we adding today? We've got quite a few options as I click on literally everything for the wrong, like, I, there's like eight animals out there I could click on randomly, and of course I picked the wrong one. Let's go ahead and take a look at, no, not the Nyala, not doing that again. Let's look at the Springbok. <laughs> oh man, alright. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to get the African Buffalo. I feel like, uh, I feel that would be uh, a nice big addition, uh, literally like a sizable addition. We can kind of see how it moves and how it affects the space and how the space looks. Uh, I think we might actually go with the African Buffalo. And in fact, that uh, ties in with uh, with something we're going to do during the uh, the time lapse as well. Yeah, maybe maybe we do the uh, African buffalo. How about it? Why not? Um, all right. The African buffalo, Sincaris kaffir kaffir, near threatened, eight hundred and thirty thousand population of wild, living throughout sub-Saharan Africa. The African buffalo, or Sincaris kaffir kaffir is the largest member of the cow family, bovids, found in the African wild. They are typically between 5.6 feet and 11.2 feet in length, measure 3.3 feet to 5.61 feet tall, and are identifiable by their distinctive horns, which are broad, curved, and unite in a boss in the center of their forehead. The dominant male in a herd will often have the largest horns. Although the species is not endangered, African buffalo are still threatened by human activity. Illegal trophy hunting is a regular occurrence, and their grazing lands are being transformed, either turned into farmland or built on by humans. African buffalo can also contract diseases that are spread by domestic livestock, and are as well vulnerable to drought conditions. They are protected in many areas that are assigned as national parks and nature reserves, while sustainable hunting occurs in legally managed zones. Alright, good stuff. I mean, it's a... Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's quite a shame, the... Like, all the trophy hunting and, and poaching and stuff, especially because like a lot of these animals, what ends up happening is, I, I don't, I can't speak specifically for the African buffalo. Um, I'm sure there are smarter people in the comments who will, you know, uh, either affirm what I'm saying or correct what I'm saying here. Feel free to do that. I'm always looking for the the, the, the right info. So not for the African buffalo specifically, but for a lot of animals, uh, you have hunting seasons uh, because you have to help cull populations, right? It's something that uh, um, it's it's very organized. It is done for uh, a very functional reason, and it tries to, it tries, at least from my understanding, it's best to fit into, um, like, the order of things, as it were, uh, and, and make sure that, uh, you know, the overpopulation isn't a problem. Overpopulation of certain animals can cause a cascading effect and, you know, take down entire ecosystems. We've seen this happen. Uh, not just with invasive species, but also with species that belong in a space but have been allowed to overpopulate. You know, if you get rid of a predator uh, and a certain animal is allowed to overpopulate, you get certain issues. And that's when you have to sort of counteract that overpopulation. Uh, and, and that's when, you know, hunting seasons and stuff come around. Uh, at least that's how, that's that's the, uh, that's ideally how it's kind of supposed to work and, and all that kind of stuff. And then you get things like trophy hunting and all that. And it's like, man, especially when there is like legal hunting of an animal, which I presume is under those same kind of circumstances and the same ideologies and, 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 and thought processes that it's like, okay, well, you know, we have to call a population or it's a, or, or what have you. 
what? Uh, anyway, I, I could, I could literally this, I, this entire session could be dedicated to me rambling and ranting about about this. But uh, it is an unfortunate thing to uh, to see that the trophy hunting is uh, is such a major problem over here. Um, I mean, the development of, of you know human cities and, and 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 towns and stuff like that and farmlands. That's obviously a tougher thing to you know reconcile, obviously, but because um, there's, I mean. There's obviously sustainable ways of, of of growing that we're always trying to do nowadays, but it's a it's a tough thing sometimes. Um, and then and then the, and then there's things like trophy hunting, which is just like, hey, how about how about don't? <laughs> Moving on to the natural habitat, of course, we've got this large swath of land, some migratory patterns, I believe, as well, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of area covered, and you can see it's. I always I always wonder every time this thing this kind of thing comes up, I go, do they just Obviously, these lines are a lot harder than they are in real life. It's not like there's a you know an invisible wall here that the uh, African buffalo can't walk past. Do they travel this massive distance ever though to go from one habitable region to another? Do they ever go from here to here or you know between these two? Like, do they do they move between these uh, these ideal regions or do they kind of like you know if you were born in this region you kind of stick in this region? What what happens? How does that work? Uh, I, oh, every time this comes up, I get curious about that. They don't need too much space, 420 meters square. I'm resisting, taking every fiber in my body to resist making a joke over here. Uh, but uh, they don't need too much space. They do need some water, though. They'll need more water than we have. Okay. I think so, at least. They'll need more water than we have. That's good to know. I guess they cool off in the water and stuff, right? All right, fair enough. And, of course, grassland and tropical. But we're going to have to stick largely with grassland uh, biome because a lot of these guys are only okay with the grassland biome. That's the thing with right? the overlapping. And that's why there was that suggestion as well of making two separate enclosures that look like they're one because then we can have a bit more freedom as far as the um, flora is concerned. But uh, we'll see. It's an interesting challenge, uh, but that is a, a great uh, suggestion, if I've understood it right, to uh, to open things up a bit more. And I'll, I'll, I'll try and figure out which way we're going to end up going. Uh, species data. All right. Group size, excluding juveniles, is 3 to 15. One male, 14 females. Male bachelor group size is 3 to 5, whereas female bachelor group size is 3 to 15. Uh, I guess, you know, extremely aggressive uh, male, so you can only have so many before things start to, you know, get set on fire, so to speak. Dominance, there is a dominant male bull. Female herds with age-based dominance. Mating system is promiscuous. Relation with humans is neutral. And guests cannot enter the habitat. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, I imagine, I imagine not. Um, this makes me think of a story for another time, perhaps, but uh, I once got charged by a bull. I promise you, I was doing nothing. Um, but uh, maybe, uh, it, well, I wasn't doing anything, but people near me were, uh, were, were, being, were being rude, is how I'll put it. And, uh, and yeah, I got charged by a bull. Fun story. I'll, uh, I'll share it sometime. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll share it sometime. Because <laughs> it's a... Uh, yeah, it's a it's a fun story, um, but yeah. So uh, no guests guests cannot enter a habitat. No, uh, five foot tall at the shoulders for males and females, both on average. Life expectancy is twenty two years on average for males and females, and weight huge discrepancy here. Fifteen hundred pounds for males and twelve seventy five for females. Again, averages right. Sexual maturity at five years, sterility at twenty. Number of offspring per mating event is one. Eleven month gestation, twenty four month interbirth, and very easy reproduction in captivity. Looking forward to seeing some baby buffalo. Social needs: African buffalo live in herds composed of many groups of related females, with groups of bachelor males and solitary dominant males existing on the periphery. A herd can be made up of multiple of these groups. Oh, okay, interesting. So hold on, wait, 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 wait. So buffalo live in herds. Composed of many groups. Okay, there it is. I, I, that, that first sentence, um, that first sentence threw me off. I, I didn't, I didn't catch the herds composed of many groups. That composed of many groups part, uh, threw me off. Um, okay, so each group has related females, bachelor groups of bachelor males, and uh, okay, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to like build a a visual aid in my head over here. So you got. Many groups of related females. All right. Now, are the... I assume this means the females in one group are related to each other as opposed to multiple groups of related females where all of the females are related to all of the other females in the in all of the groups, right? Uh, and there's groups of bachelor males as well as solo dominant males 
kind of roaming around the perimeter. <laughs> sort of, obviously, not, not very literally. Okay, fair enough. And then a herd can be made up of multiple of these groups. Right, okay, fair enough, gotcha. So a herd has all three of these things potentially happening. And potentially multiples of all three of these things. Okay. That maybe threw me off more than it should have. Reproduction. African buffalo mate year round. A male will track females for signs of estrus and upon finding a receptive partner, he will defend her from rival males until he is able to mate with her. The males with higher dominance are more likely to successfully guard and mate. Males with higher dominance are more... Okay. Uh, an African buffalo mother's pregnancy lasts 11.5 months, and she will give birth to a single calf, which remains close to her until it is between one and two years old. At this age, males will leave and join a bachelor herd, whereas females will remain with their mothers. Well, what happens afterwards? This one, I feel like this one stops short. I feel, oh, I want to know more. What happens with that female, like, you know, comes of age? When when, and why does, does a female part from one group and join another? Uh, how do herds split up? and split off. I have questions. I have questions. Our right, research status, of course, we've got nothing over here. They've got, uh, they like the scratching trees and stuff. We'll already have some of those. We'll be able to add more. The mud bath. We got to make sure we get water in here, though, right, for them to kind of swim or, or wade in. No fun facts yet, but I've got one for you myself. Did you know, fun fact, that buffalo, 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 buffalo is a grammatically correct sentence. I think I've got that right. Buffalo, 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 buffalo. Yeah, I believe that's it. It's a 100% grammatically correct sentence. Sorry, every, every time I see the word buffalo, I, I can't help but get completely distracted by that. But anyway, well, I'm looking forward to these fun facts, the actual fun facts that the game has to offer. And of course, these guys will hopefully get along wonderfully with all of these other animals. Now, I just want to point out, by the way, with regards to the Nyala, because I saw some questions come up. Here's the thing. Uh, if we take a look at enrichment, which is zero right now because we haven't unpaused, you'll see the interspecies bonus over here. All this screen means is that if these animals live with each other, this interspecies bonus will be bumped up. The Nyala only gets along with the sorry, the Nyala only gets along with the southern white rhino. Uh, so its I believe 20% bonus will only be derived from the southern white rhino. Whereas the southern white rhino will get that 20% from all of these animals that are sharing the same space. Just because the Nyala is only getting that enrichment from the southern white rhino doesn't mean that it cannot also coexist with all of these other animals. Uh, I just want to be clear about that because I, I think I saw some questions come up with regards to my plans over there and, and potential issues from that. And, and maybe I've misunderstood and, and maybe I've made some assumptions and I apologize for that. Uh, but, uh, but that's the plan and hopefully it'll work out okay. I think... They get along uh, just fine with every other animal, but if they don't, then maybe we'll get the rhino and the nyala in a different enclosure. Now, the African buffalo is the animal du jour, so why don't we go ahead and get ourselves, not in the storage, I am so happy they made the storage much larger. Uh, why don't we go ahead and get ourselves an African buffalo. Uh, ooh, oh, no, God, no. I, I no, 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 not a chance. Let's sort by price over here. Flip that around. There we go. Walid. Wow, oh, these stats on a, on a gold, really? Baruti? Oh, wow. The price skyrockets, eh? Alright. Why does Gohan have a bronze... Gohan seems so much better than Walid. The marginal difference, eh? Where, where does silver sit? Hmm. I'm thinking uh, Zakia D for our female. And let's go ahead and grab Walid, maybe. Where are you from? African Zoo's Corp. African Zoo's Corp. And you've got to be your scuffed zoo. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Why don't we go ahead and get uh, Go On then? Why don't we go on ahead and get Go On? Hey, all right, let's do that. Sure. Sure. Uh, kind of on the pricey side, but again, we got 50 animals in storage. We'll do a trade session sometime soon, and we'll uh, we'll get some trading done. Uh, for now, we'll we'll stick with these two though, and we might eventually want um, we might eventually want to get some more as we expand the space, especially. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the ah yes, perfect. They've got this as well. Um, except it doesn't work. Where's my buffalo? Uh, freaking okay, fair enough. Be that way then. I guess I gotta go to the animal trading, animal storage. 
that you guys picked up from there. I'm, I'm glad they've added these search bars in more places. Almost clipped release to the wild there. That would be funny. Send to the zoo. Over to quarantine. Again, I wanted to scope uh, scope this out before the uh, time lapse, just in case, you know, just in case none become available after the time lapse and we had some options at the beginning. I'm, I'm glad I did that, actually, because apparently they're relatively uh, scarce. So I'm glad we did that. All right. With that out of the way and the animals getting prepped to uh, show up over here, uh, you know, I wonder if, hang on, can I check really quickly over here? It won't even tell me how much water we have. Oh, we got, we got enough water. I, I was worried this was not enough water. We got more than enough water. Oh, this is going to work out wonderfully. This is going to work out wonderfully. All right, folks, with that said, let's, uh, let's dive on into the time lapse. Uh, I, I, again, like I said, I've got some plans. It'll, I can't remember if I mentioned this or not, but these plans will either work out splendidly or they're going to fall apart because we're going to be using some pieces in some ways that maybe they weren't, uh, intended to be used. Either way, it's going to be a good time. <laughs> folks, Oh, it feels so good to be able to say this. But yes, folks, it's time lapse time. All right, folks, I am super excited to share this time lapse. Honestly, it's probably one of my uh, favorite end results. It's probably also one of the most intricate things I've built um, in just the number of pieces it needs and the like research and reference material, all that kind of stuff. I, it's honestly. Uh, I personally really enjoyed doing this one. I really enjoy the end result, and I, I hope you do as well. Uh, but let me know in the comments. Let me know your thoughts in the comments uh, as I kind of uh, sort of talk about, you know, of course, like what the inspiration is, uh, where where this visual language and all has come from. It's actually one that uh, I've uh, seen fairly often. I feel like I feel like it's a it's a familiar sight, uh, but not one that uh, many perhaps know too much about as far as like the the origins or anything are concerned and uh to be perfectly frank uh i didn't either so i i you know while i was doing some research for uh for today's time lapse i uh came across this uh, aesthetic again and i started to dig a little bit deeper and you know as as one does when they dig deeper into certain things i started to find out some well very interesting uh elements and uh, i just started to grow more and more in love with the aesthetic i already love this aesthetic because it's very geometric, it's very, uh, it's got bold colors, bold lines, and it's all really, as far as uh, um, a design aesthetic is concerned, it's, it's some stuff that I really quite enjoy. I mean, look at the channel, right? That bright red, that bright yellow, then you've got that deep purple black that acts as like a shadow, um, bold uh, lettering, very geometric. I, I, I like the aesthetic, I like the, uh, the, the design language and stuff that comes with it. Uh, so what are we looking at here? We are looking at some... Oh, wait, hold on. First of all, before I start, I'm going to be butchering some pronunciations today. I'm sure of it. And if you know how to say these words better than me, please don't hesitate to correct me in the comments and I will try and uh, fix my mispronunciations. I apologize in advance. Uh, I will be doing my best. Um, so this uh, uh, style that you're seeing over here is inspired by the uh, Indebele people of... Uh, I'll say South Africa, Southern Africa. I, I think I, if, if I have my geography correct in my head and if I remember my maps correctly, Southern Africa would be the more correct term because they're not entirely contained within South Africa, though I think the vast majority of them are in South Africa. Um, I can't remember for the life of me right now, and I apologize for that. But, uh, but yes, they are a, a Southern African people uh, who... How do I even? So a lot of this, <laughs> a lot of this history is a little uncertain, um, and uh, obviously, so take it all with a grain of salt. I did a fair bit of research, and, and quite a few sources uh, suggested this was uh, accurate. However, they all kind of had caveats in their sort of introductory statements, like "oh, from what we know" or "our understanding" or what have you, right? But basically, the Indebelli people had this uh, uh, this art style uh, that they painted on their uh, walls with. I think, uh, I think if I recall correctly, it was like chicken feathers and things like that that were painted on their walls. Very vibrant, very colorful. Uh, it was just kind of a, uh, it, it was a, it was, it was a, it was an art style for the people. And, that, you know, every, every, every culture and, 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 and people have a certain aesthetic and style and, and, and whatnot. But what sort of, I guess, 
makes this particular art style stand out from a historical perspective is that at one point, the Indivella people were uh, defeated and conquered by the Boer people. Again, a lot of this history comes with a caveat of like, or so we believe. So just uh, keep that in mind, please. But they were, uh, so they were conquered by the uh, Boer people. Uh, and they were a warrior people themselves as well, so I imagine this was probably like a, a tumultuous event. I mean, being conquered is a tumultuous event whether you're a warrior people or not, let's be honest. Uh, but the Boer people would actually allow the Indibeli people to continue their uh, art. They didn't um, crush this, uh, this cultural uh, expression. They didn't prevent it or anything like that. They didn't halt it. And so, supposedly, uh, it started being used as a form, not necessarily of defiance per se, but as a form of um, uh, just a shared uh, cultural language. It was a, it was a symbol of perhaps uh, solidarity, maybe is the right word or a better word for it. Uh, but it was just a, it was a, a show sort of of strength, but more sort of in like hushed whispers of like uh, of unity. Um, as opposed to, you know, picking up arms and things like that, as it were. Uh, but yeah, so it was allowed to continue. The uh, uh, Boer people, again, I'm, I'm mispronouncing that, aren't I? Uh, I'm, I, I'm really, actually, I'm quite sorry if I, if I am. Uh, please, please correct me. Uh, but they, um, they saw it as like, okay, whatever, it's a cultural thing they do, whatever, let, let it be, let it be, let them, let them do their thing. Uh, and I'm going to interrupt that or a quick note over here as I uh, establish our sponsor board. I was uh, meaning to do that at the beginning of this uh, time lapse, but I got so carried away. Uh, so Trigart over here is also sponsoring our Springbok. And I'll touch more on this sign and what I plan to do with these signs after the time lapse. But again, thank you, Trigart, for the continued support uh, of the channel of uh, the animals as well and of Elite Zoo South and North. Um, so the Boar people were like, all right, you know what, go on. It's it's no big deal. It's a, it's a, They're just paintings. Uh, but uh, from a symbolic perspective, uh, it meant a lot more to the Indibeli people. Um, the art became, from, again, my understanding of it, a bit more mainstream, if you will, around the uh, 40s, I think it was, uh, when it was, you know, photographed and, and shared and, and people around the world were starting to like go, wow, this is amazing. Um, and uh, and that it, things sort of started to change, and, and, and uh, it, it became e sort of even in South Africa, it was allowed to uh, be expressed. It was in fact, in in some ways, uh, used as a show of um, culture within the country, and uh, eventually, it started becoming an art that was. An art style, rather, I should say, that became uh, somewhat commercialized. Now, actually, I haven't seen uh, these examples, and I'm curious to go digging and, and, and finding them, but apparently uh, there is a designer. I believe her name was Malangu. Uh, Malangu, I think it was. Uh, who has done art for giant uh, corporations like uh, BMW, uh, Belvedere, um, the, so like, you know, this, this rather a humble, you know, beginnings has exploded into, uh, the mainstream in this way. And, uh, and I think that might be part of the reason why we, we see it so much. Um, but I just thought it was a, it was a very, uh, interesting aesthetic. Uh, it lends itself to, yes, modern, um, uh, like, senses of graphic design uh and 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 yet it's from how long ago right i i love this kind of stuff right it, it is kind of stuff really fascinates me and i've always loved this aesthetic and it gave me an opportunity to, to dig a bit more uh into it because uh you know i've previously correctly or incorrectly just associated this as like a oh yes this is one of the many uh african um sort of tribal art styles but now there's a there's a bit of context to that there's a bit more knowledge to that and uh, there's a bit more uh, just I don't know information uh, surrounding that uh, statement which uh, I'm, I've personally been very glad to uh, be able to expose myself to uh, and I mean I, I just I, I really truly really quite love how it looks the the bold 
you know, white typically like so it's not always that the 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 the, the back is is covered in white but uh, very often it is fully covered in white uh, in the background and then you get these thick black lines and then the uh, lines inside to, to create these geometric shapes uh, and colors again very bold very vibrant uh, apparently a lot of the more modern um, works like when buildings are painted in, in this style uh, apparently a lot of them are inspired by the urban uh, shapes you know uh, uh, elect again this is all like analysis right so we like is it not not every single one of not every single one of these pieces is like this but many of them are from like artist statements and things like that so take all of this with a grain of salt it's very important to keep that in mind whenever discussing art or even design uh, but art especially uh but you know they're inspired by like uh what the city looks like and urbanization and that kind of stuff so you have to wonder like what were the inspirations uh throughout the years throughout the eras of this uh art style existing anyway i could ramble about this for literally hours i did so much research and i, I love i love looking this stuff up and, and learning more and more about uh different uh, art styles and aesthetics but yes it is the indebele uh house painting if you want to look it up for yourself uh, that is spelled n-d-e-b-e-l-e -E -E. fascinating stuff gorgeous stuff um and uh an interesting history and, and again if you're more aware of, of any little factoids that i'm unaware of then please share them in the comments down below i love learning more stuff especially from uh you know from 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 the comments and stuff it's uh it, it's they're so enlightening so often but folks unfortunately that is pretty much it for this time lapse there's as you can see plenty of work to do here still uh so i'll have i'll have a chance to follow up on this conversation and keep rambling about this absolutely gorgeous art style but for now back to regular speed all right folks we are back from the time lapse and man that was a very 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 intricate bit of work i mean geez I, I you know what it's kind of funny i may have mentioned this in the time lapse i may not have had a, had enough time to mention it sorry but the first thing that happened during that time lapse was me going to pick out the pieces i wanted to use for this project and realizing that i hadn't unlocked them yet uh so that was a nice surprise but uh resilience persistence whichever you'd want to call it pig-headedness <laughs> obstinate stubbornness whatever you want to whatever term you want to use positive or negative uh, it all, uh, you know, it, it, it paid off, I guess, and uh, I managed to pull off uh, uh, pretty much sort of what I was going for. I mean, my uh, in my sort of, you know, mind's eye, as it were, I had much more intricate patterning going on, uh, but I think I knew that realistically it wouldn't be possible because to get more intricate patterning, I would need smaller pieces, and smaller pieces are just not available, smaller than this. I thought there were some in the uh, Africa pack dlc um like uh building pieces but uh, you know what i wasn't able to check because i haven't actually researched those yet and so we don't have access to them yet that was a it was a hilarious start to the uh to the time lapse for me i was just like oh oh man i my entire like time lapse was hinging on me being able to pull off this uh this this art style this aesthetic and uh, oops <laughs> so that was that was funny uh, let's actually get uh, Brittany in here. We've got ourselves a named uh, staff member as an engineer. So let's go ahead and get uh, a mechanic is the actual term. Sorry. Uh, let's get Brittany in here researching the North Africa theme so I don't find myself in that position and circumstance ever again. Uh, but yeah, pretty pleased with this. I mean, again, during the time lapse, things can zip by pretty quickly. Obviously, there's still plenty of work to do over here, but all the, uh, the groundwork has been laid. Uh, and, and now it's a matter of, you know, choosing colors, uh, figuring out the patterning, maybe coming up with something a little different for the front face. I might come up with like a, a unified piece uh, for the front face altogether. Um, and I think that might be uh, that might be uh, what we'll then kind of replicate over for this setup over here. And we'll have to find a way to get our uh, washroom, you know, a, a part of the entire thing, because, of course, these are a set of three and, you know, these aren't perfectly lined up. So it's going to be a bit of fiddling, but uh, Man, really pleased with how this uh, how this looks. And again, of course, we use that to inspire our sponsor boards in the area as well. We've got Trigart over here sponsoring the Springbok. And what I'm thinking is uh, for each animal, we'll have a different like color set, maybe a different pattern or maybe just a different color set. I'm not sure just quite yet. So if we get different folks looking to sponsor different animals, we'll be able to tell them apart using the, uh, the, the sort of the color uh, uh, scheme, I guess, of the sponsor board. Uh, but yeah, I've always loved this uh, this aesthetic, and and uh, I'm glad to have a reason to explore it a bit further and talk about it a bit more, and uh, actually try and execute it. I, man, I'm honestly just I can't keep uh, uh, I, I need to stop 
like zooming in on this, but I'm really quite pleased with how this looks and I hope you all like it as well. Uh, definitely, I would say, mm, well, it's up there as far as my sort of most intricate works. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna look great when it's all kind of done and we could probably do the uh, train station in that style as well, potentially. Uh, but either way, folks, that is all that. Let's go ahead and take a look at our animals. Well, rather, there's nothing to look at. I gotta unpause first. Gotta get the, uh, uh, what's it called? Quarantine stuff done. And while we're waiting for that to get done, I actually got an excellent suggestion in the uh, comments that I want to implement. Sorry for burning retinas over there as we went underground. Where are we? There we are. Over here. All the way over here. And down over here. I should get a Vista setup. Now, I don't know if people will come here. I'm hoping they will, but the least we can do is set up the, the spot so they can uh, they can be drawn here, right? Go ahead and put this down. Sure. I want it to be right in the middle, but I don't know how this works for actually navigating the path, you know? Like, I don't want to block the donation bin or anything. Let's let's try this. Let's try this. Go ahead and do that. Set item focus. Um... This enclosure, not not Gorilla Grove. This enclosure, Waddle Walk, please. Like Gorilla Grove, that's that doesn't sound like a name I would give the uh, I would give the penguins uh, enclosure. Anyway, let's let's see if that works out because I think that would be quite nice if it does. And actually, one thing I forgot to do in that tunnel, I got so consumed by uh, uh, by oh look at look at that. That's oh man, you could like see it from a mile out. Uh, I'll, okay, well not not that far out. There we go, roughly there. And it, it really does stand out, doesn't it? Now, the sun's setting, we're gonna get that golden hour uh, lighting, color, like coloration and stuff. But the, it really does, really does uh, stand out, doesn't it? Oh, don't wanna miss this. Oh, we caught the tail end of it. God, they're so cute. So I only recently found out about this very adorable animal that I think some of y'all might want to uh, look up. The synchronized uh, animations are always funny. Uh, it's called a Pika. Um, apparently we have them in Canada. And they're very adorable. So if you've uh, never seen a pika, uh, check out some YouTube videos about the pika. It's uh, it's 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 very adorable. Just seeing the the size of these guys and just the general overall kind of like shape of them uh, made me made me think about that uh, that the, 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 the pika. Anyway, a uh, little distraction there. December of one six one, we'll have a new koala baby. That's good. I'm glad we're seeing koala babies again. Uh, but sorry, before I get ahead of myself, I'm thinking I'll. Maybe use this uh, aesthetic, not just for the train station. Again, maybe for the train station, right? But not just for that, uh, but also maybe all the way down over here for some of these guys. Uh, trying to bring that... Uh... It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough thing to try and um, figure out for me here. Because off the top of my head, uh, I don't know the delineations of, you know... Um, of, of, of aesthetics. I mean, so, sometimes you'll get overlaps, right? Like, uh, going, going to go on a bit of a tangent over here. But as an example, if you take a look at, say, Indian architecture, you will get Indian architecture that is very similar to what we would typically call, like, Muslim architecture or, um, you know, Persian architecture because of, obviously, uh, invasions, the history there, and cultural osmosis. Um, but there is still a distinction between what is... Uh, like what is considered Indian versus Persian. I I Indian Persian blend is, you know, uh, considered Indian versus Persian is considered Persian. And then you've got, like, there's, it, it gets really weird when you talk about um, how, where, where are those lines, right? What separates uh, cultural, architectural, and art styles and stuff like that. Uh, and while there are some things I am familiar with, there are some things I am not familiar with. So, you know, what I'm getting at is, where are the overlaps in this area? Uh, from my research, we would be fine using thatched roofing and stuff like that for these uh, sort of Indebele-inspired houses. Uh, however, like, how, how justifiable is that? I, I gotta figure that out. I gotta figure out if I can bring that aesthetic down over here, or if it clashes with, you know, not just the, uh, the rest of the aesthetic we have going on over here, but some of the animals down over here and stuff like that. There's a, there's a lot of pondering I must do, uh, before I can, uh, make a call like that. I obviously, I want to be very cognizant of that. Um, and what is, why, why, why are you able to get out so easily? Oh, I see. This is still causing us trouble, eh? Well, actually, that shouldn't be. You should still very well be in your enclosure here. Oh, you know what? I think I know what's happening. Um, 
I think I know what's happening. I think it's because of the whole height thing. Maybe the height isn't... Oh, actually, I don't... You know what? I, I don't know what's happening. This goes all the way around, and there's this guy over here, right? The barrier. I thought they'd... I thought they'd finally sort this thing out. Perhaps I was wrong. Wait, did you legit just jump out of here? That, that might be an actual escape. I didn't catch that. Turn that off. There we go. Hey, this might this might actually be an escape. You guys are escaping a lot. I might need to just block this off. As much fun as this has been, I might need to just block this off. It's really uh, quite unfortunate, but I think we raise these rocks up a little bit and uh, hopefully keep the animals uh, blocked off here. I liked what we had, but it's uh, it's gotten to that point where it's just like I feel like I spend so much time adjusting this where where I really shouldn't have to. We'll see if that does the trick if they're able to actually climb this, and we'll uh, we'll make adjustments later on if necessary. Uh, but yeah, as I was as I was saying, I, I want to be very careful about just generalizing uh, uh, cultural delineations and aesthetics and things like that, especially when it comes to uh, you know things that are often and I've, I've said this countless times that things there are some things that are often just seen as uh, uh, sort of a monolithic uh, cultures or, or monolithic um, spaces, uh, and Africa is one of those. Uh, I, I say this often because it's it's one of those things that always like it comes up fairly often. It's just like well, it's you can't just a massive landmass with countless um, cultures and subcultures and all that kind of stuff. So like, I want to be careful about implying even that it's like oh yeah you know yeah it's all whatever it's all the same it's african it's like well, what does that mean i'm very particular about that and uh, it happens a lot in very in, in it happens a lot across the world uh that kind of generalization but it happens a lot more in certain spaces than other um you know another i mean hearkening back to what i was just saying earlier india is another good example of uh, of that where it's just like oh yeah it's it's indian well what, what does that mean is it uh North Indian, is it South Indian, is it East Indian, is it West Indian, is it Bengali Indian, is it Gujarati Indian, is it Rajasthani Indian, is it, you know, Tamil, is it, uh, 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 like, Punjabi, is it, like, what is it, what kind of, what kind of, and, and India, from a landmass perspective, you know, it's not a continent, <laughs> right, uh, it's a subcontinent, it plus other, uh, other, other nations, obviously, so, so, like, you know, it, it happens all the time, um, and in some cases, it happens a lot more than than others. Uh, it's a lot more common, and a lot it, in some ways is a lot more. It's seen as a lot more like acceptable. It's seen like, oh yeah, yeah I know what you mean. You know, uh, when people say like, oh yeah, it's African. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's like, well, what, what do you, where, where in? I'm and maybe I'm maybe I'm too particular about some of these things. But it's it's one of those things that's always been ever since I was relatively young. I would say it's always been one of those like. That's a whole continent, man. <laughs> kind of a people. And I, I think that's born from maybe my uh, uh, love for ancient Egypt. I, I was... Uh, ancient Egypt was one of those things that I like. I always thought was super cool. Uh, and, and just... Uh, when I say ancient Egypt, I mean like, you know, upper, lower. Uh, like ancient, ancient, ancient Egypt. And then, of course, having lived in Morocco for three years, that you grow sort of a an interest. And my, my interest in history... I may be very interested in like Moorish expansions and things like that versus sub-Saharan Africa. And then of course, like, so, you know, I, for me personally, that distinction is, uh, is something I keep in mind fairly often. Um, and so whenever it's, it's not kept in mind, I kind of go like, well, hey, isn't that unfair? <laughs> Again, maybe I'm being too particular. Now, what's the deal over here? You're not in ideal climates. Why? How is it so? Oh, I see because of this overlap over here we've got what's cooling it down over here where is our I guess you're the one responsible for all this okay why don't we go ahead and reduce how much we're cooling by because I think the penguins are okay in like in in non-zero uh temperatures I think right we should be fine over there um <laughs> their shapes are just so perfect honestly uh how do I how do I, where do I go is the PD over here in your negative 20 to 17 yeah they've got they've got some wiggle room so 10 degrees should not be a problem over there all right let's head on over now to our buffalo hopefully where where this has gotten so big there we go look for the bright vibrant colors i guess where are we there we are truly iconic though right like 
a very, very iconic shape. Those horns are very much, yes, like a recognizable element, I would say, like, you get a silhouette of that, if you're, if you're familiar with the, with the animals, if you're, if you're like, if you're, um, into animals, I guess is a way to, to put it, uh, I, I think that's one of the most recognizable, uh, silhouettes, probably. Look at, look at the level of detail on this, oh my god, man, it blows my mind every time, like, I know we've, we've talked about how detailed these animals are, and, you know, they're all very detailed, especially, like, the base game animals, uh, they came in with a with a lot of in with a lot of fire, honestly. Um, but it's still it never for me gets old. Just zooming in and being like, "Wow, look at the look at the detail! Look at the detail on the horns, man!" Yeah, absolutely wild, absolutely wild. And of course, you've got like the skin, and and when they're wet and they're extra shiny, it, it all stands out so much more, uh, just because of uh, like the 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 the, the sheen, right? I'm trying to find, like, that, that thumbnail shot, you know? It's somewhere here. Somewhere here. I feel like the backlit... The backlit buffalo. Oh, back into the water you go. Fair enough. How about you, buddy? So, such gorgeous animals. Let's take a look over here, though. Very quickly. Super happy. Super happy. Super happy. Super happy. This is great. I almost feel like I've, uh, turned the difficulty off. I obviously haven't. This is, uh... <laughs> I feel like my camera got knocked there. Um, we obviously haven't because that's, this is franchise mode, but everything's perfect. They've, they've slotted right in, perfectly happy, more than enough space, more than enough water. This is great. This is great. Now, I do have to get another adult in here, so why don't we go ahead and take a look and see if there is another female available. Uh, animal Market. Afrolita. Nah, the longevity is kind of low. Amina. Uh, wow, that's all we've got? Luana. Oh, these are better stats. <laughs> that might, this is hilarious. <laughs> oh man, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Uh, let's go with Zoena here. Not the best stats, but not that bad either. Evans Inc. All right, we do not have somebody from there already. Go ahead and bring you into quarantine. Where are we? Where are we? Nope. Give me the ah, fine. <laughs> Now, actually, while I do this, I um, I got a, I got an interesting comment uh, that uh, resonated with me uh, in the comments of the last session. But I just wanted to kind of throw it out there. I'm not exactly sure yet uh, where I stand on this. Um, I'm I'm thinking about it, and it definitely jostled my my uh, my plans in a good way, mind you, in a good way, because uh, I had some things in mind, and then I realized, oh, you know what? Yeah, I didn't I didn't think this through. You have a point, point. Uh, and I'm curious how others feel about this. But uh, last session, of course, we did a lot of uh, planning conversation, right? We talked about, like, oh, which animals are coming next, where we're maybe putting them, how we might approach their uh, enclosures and stuff, and there was some really, uh, there's some ideas that I'm really excited for, uh, and I got some reactions and some some thoughts with regards to where we place some animals and all that kind of stuff. Oh, of course, I'm, I'm here for this. Well, hey, welcome to the zoo. Uh, and welcome <laughs> welcome back to Elite Zoo South, I suppose, again. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I got a comment with regards to uh, how it might be a nice idea to stay focused on non-DLC animals for now. Uh, we talked a little bit about the uh, the meerkat and the um, the fennec fox and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and there was a great comment that was just like, you know, we, we just saw those. Not on the franchise, zoo, sure, but like we just saw those on the channel. Uh, so why don't we work on some of these animals that we've never seen on the channel. And then we'll come back to some of those guys, some of those DLC animals, uh, to insert them afterwards. And uh, this little guy running over there. Um, and, uh, and I thought, you know, that's a, that's a really good point. Yeah, we've... we've Maybe not in the franchise, but we've, we've seen those animals. So why don't we do some of these animals that we've never seen on the channel before. And then we'll, uh, we'll come back. And, uh... And, and we'll, we'll add those DLC animals later on. Now, the, the, the other thing to note, though, um, as was pointed out in the comments, but, uh, I forgot to mention this last time as well. Shape, it's so good. Uh, the Aardvark and the Meerkat can share an enclosure. And I think we might make a shared enclosure for them. Uh, in which case we will get one of the DLC animals, but that's more by virtue of just, you know, uh, sheer coincidence, I suppose, if we get both the, uh, the, the meerkat and the aardvark in, in the same enclosure. I mean, y'all let me know what you think about that. I'm obviously, uh, I've all obviously got thoughts and plans of my own, but I'm always open to feedback and other people's opinions, obviously. Uh, it helps me make decisions with regards to what to do and how to go about doing it. I say it all the time. And also, that's why, folks, I keep mentioning, you know, if you've been enjoying the show, leave a like, leave a comment. It does make a very big difference in just kind of letting me know what y'all want to see 
uh, and and what I should do, what I should slow down or speed up or keep in mind on the channel. It makes a direct impact, especially in times like this where, uh, you know, I have to uh, make very difficult decisions with regards to uh, how to use what limited time I might have. Uh, and, and it's why, you know, it makes a direct impact on uh, on, on what you see on the, on the channel. Um, yeah. Oh, man, these guys are... So cool. So, like, just impressive, you know? Just impressive. A couple of hungry ringtail lemurs. We're going to keep an eye on that, make sure it doesn't become a problem. I think it's just a matter of timing there. We might need some more keepers and stuff like that. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Let's go ahead and move Zuena in here. We'll rename Zuena as well. Get rid of the, uh, the numbers. Oh, right, and that reminds me. I need a male zebra as well. Again, I've got my notes, but sometimes I get into the flow of things, and I just, like, I... Forget to keep an eye on my notes, but I do believe, yes, we need a male zebra, right? Because to my knee here is not an option. Not an option, I believe. Compare mates to my knee. Inbreeding, yeah. Yep, inbreeding. Okay, there is an option over here, but uh, limited options, I guess. Oh, there's there's, there's actually, it's not, not that limited. But some of our best females are not options for to my knee. He has... Too many siblings in the enclosure wall. Oh, that one was kind of really bad, wasn't it? Oh, I should feel bad about that one, maybe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to opt not to feel bad about it, but I maybe should. Zebra. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a new male zebra. Hondo. Edisola. Badru. Okay, let's, let's see if we can't... No way. That's all of them? What's happening? What's been happening lately? To, uh, to the marketplace. Badru, maybe? Akani for 2,000. Those stats are really not that good, though. But I guess Zebras with good stats are not that easy to find. You know what? I'm going to hold off. We've waited this long. We'll wait one more uh, session. We'll try and get a male in there. We have a bachelor uh, bachelor group right now. It's not the end of the world or anything. They're not upset about it. But uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do about uh, by getting ourselves a, a new male Zebra. Again, thanks for the reminder, though. I did get a reminder in, uh, in chat, and it does make... Or not in chat, in the comments. And it does make a difference again. You're uh, clipping for the train there, buddy. Up we go. <laughs> Just turn the camera and see his like, little head zip by across the bottom. Oh, it brings me so much joy. I, I want to see them down over here, though. Oh, good. We are actually getting some of them down over here. That's nice to see. I was getting a little concerned. These guys are down over here. Oh, look at these guys. Oh, look at this. This is great. This is great. What a sight. What are you two up to? I'm so pleased to see them down here. I was a little worried that this wouldn't see any uh, any love, any action, uh, but no, we have uh, we have these guys coming down here almost exclusively. It feels like, yeah, it's like almost exclusively these guys are down over here. Oh, that's kind of funny. Oh God, <laughs> that was a trampling waiting to happen. Yikes. We'll see. Hopefully, somebody else will start exploring these areas too. Are you guys? Just kind of clipping into each other with animations, or are you actually mating or interacting? Hard to tell. You know, I just started my Beastmen playthrough in Total War Warhammer uh, 2 with the new DLC, and uh, they're very much inspired by a lot of this kind of uh, bovine um, imagery and aesthetic. You like animals, <laughs> and you haven't checked out my Warhammer 2 Let's Play that's, that just kicked off, and. Uh, there's a, there's a cro unexpected crossover. Folks, this has been a very fun session, but unfortunately, I think this is where it must come to an end. Um, we did accomplish quite a bit today. We got ourselves a new animal. We got to look at its Zoopedia entry. Let's go ahead and get some research going as well. I believe we've completed something at least, right? Oh, a little bit of the North Africa theme. What's going on with our uh, vet research? I could have sworn... Oh, there we go. The Western Chimpanzee and the Bonobo have been completed. I need to remember to look at their fun facts, uh, but we'll be doing that next time. Let's go ahead and get Lucy Meg working on the African Buffalo over here. If I can just drag that over. There we go. So let's get that research going. We'll take a look at the Bonobo and the Western Chimpanzee's uh, fun facts next session. But We will also, I think, hopefully look to add a new animal and uh, continue the development of that region as well, right? Lots to get done still. Lots to get done still. Uh, and I'm looking forward to 
getting onto it all. Now that aesthetic that we've established up top is probably the aesthetic that we'll also use for the, uh, the, um, like, uh, what are they called? Exhibit animal? Yeah, the exhibit animal, um, house as well. I don't want to call it like a reptile house because it's not like they're all reptiles or anything, but it is something we're, uh, we're going to be, um, referencing quite a bit. Let me just check real quickly. Zoopedia. These guys, the Nile Monitor. Are you? Nah. Data deficient, not critically endangered. I was going to release them to the wild. Oh, maybe I should do that anyways. Release to the wild. Off you go. Just two of them? Okay. Is that enough to tackle our fighting? A couple more males over here. Let's send you to the Trade Center. Just in case I've got something wrong over here. All right, cool. We have a few in our back pocket, a few from our own uh, zoo in our, in our back pocket, as it were. Uh, but yeah, folks, this is where we're going to call it a session. Hope you had a good time. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like, leave a comment, let me know. If you have any thoughts or opinions to share about uh, anything we talked about today, including our plans and how they're evolving and the, uh, the new spaces, again, leave a comment down below. It will get read. It will get addressed. Folks, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.